All right, hello, I'm Greg, or Big Reno, when I talk about airplanes on the internet. Um, today I want to talk about survival vests. And this was precipitated by a film that I did while, while I was up in Alaska, um, where I was wearing this vest, which sparked a lot of uh, questions, a lot of debate, um, some critiques and criticisms. Um, so uh, Zane from Backcountry Pilot asked me if I wouldn't mind uh, making a little video to talk about the vest. And I said, sure, what the hell? So a uh, disclaimer, right, I don't purport to be any kind of expert, okay? These are my own kind of wild meanderings. I've been thinking about this a lot. So take it for what it is, okay? It's been possibly commented that the vest is a little bit too super commando, maybe. Um, the jury's still out. I think it's an important discussion to have. Um, I go back and forth in my head, but fundamentally I'm trying to take my ego out of it and look at it as a problem uh, that needs solving. So the vest is kind of an evolving organic thing uh, and I add to it and subtract to it. And uh, I still don't know what I feel about it, but a work in progress, okay? So survival vest. I think it's important to me to figure out what the hell does the vest need to do? And I think philosophically it's got to answer two uh, questions. Can it prepare me physically and can it prepare me mentally? And I think if it addresses those two topics, then it's moving in the right direction. So thinking at, about vests, you know, on the whole, I think we see a lot of people and, and they start with, well, what's the best vest, right? Is it this fishing vest or that military vest or this photography vest? They get the vest and, you know, oh, this is great. Maybe it's got 10 pockets and they go say, well, what the hell can I fit in these 10 pockets? So their items are driven by the capacity of that particular piece of equipment. I think maybe a better way to look at this issue is first to clearly define what the problem is going to be. And then once we know what the problems are, we can solve those individual problems um, with equipment, maybe, okay? So um, that's how I tried to address this issue of the vest. So in thinking about, well, what does the vest have to do? Uh, I kind of feel like it has to do three things, three C's, if you will. It's got to be comfortable, it's got to be compact, and it's got to be complete. Okay, so this vest is pretty complete. It's 10 pounds of shit packed in a five pound bag here. Um, it's comfortable for sure, okay? It may look bulky, but it's comfortable. But is it complete? Uh, uh, sorry, is it uh, compact? I don't know, jury's out. I mean, I, I, it kind of grows and then it shrinks. Um, it's feeling pretty uh, compact right now. I can fly in my sky wagon, no problems. Sometimes when there's another person, it gets a little bit more bulk, but by, by myself, it's no problem. But I'd like it to be a little bit smaller, but I'm kind of in that risk reward uh, situation. So comfortable, compact, complete. Um, so if we go along this lines of, of identifying what the problem that needs to be solved, I think the first big question is, well, how, how long are we gonna be out there, right? Who the hell knows, okay? But fortunately, there's some data out there. The FAA says um, that, in their infinite wisdom, that uh, they have a term LKP, last known position to rescue time, okay? In the context of VFR flight with no flight plan is 42 and a half hours, okay? They break it into, you know, IFR, VFR with, and then VFR without flight plan. Without flight plan is the longest. 48, uh, 42 and a half hours to so two days. So the vest has got to kind of support us for two days. I think that's probably a good baseline to, to, to think about. The next thing uh, in this idea of defining the problem, I think for me, was to outline what I call the evolution of the insult, okay? Um, so let's try to do a little bit of weatherman stuff here. Evolution of an insult. So what the hell does this mean? kind of did an arc, you know, like a timeline of, of what I kind of foresee that crash would have been, like that insult. So obviously we have the initial event or the insult, that's the crash, right? Next, we're gonna have some period of disorientation to reorientation. Maybe we've all been in a, a fender bender to a, to a wreck, I sure have rolled my share of cars. Uh, disorientation to reorientation, we find ourselves upside down, bumped in the head, like what the hell just happened? And then we kind of start to realize, oh shit, just what just happened? Um, now we're gonna have to, have to directly extricate ourselves and evaluate, 
We're going to get the hell out of that. We're going to pull our buddy out. Okay, we're going to extricate and evaluate. I think probably we're going to have to stabilize ourselves. Okay, that may mean mentally, stabilize, stabilize ourselves, uh, sorry, medically, okay, which may be some sort of traumatic insult to the tissue. A buddy's got a broken bone, we got to burn, okay, we have to put a tourniquet on, some kind of thing like that, bleeding scalp wound, okay, then we're going to have to stabilize ourselves mentally, which may mean just sitting on a goddamn log, like taking it all in, holy shit, what just happened, okay. Once we screwed our head on, now we're going to want to communicate. We're going to want to start that rescue cascade. Okay, we want to get people coming. Maybe we can communicate, maybe we can't, but we got to get that going. Okay, because we got 40, you know, one and a half more hours to be out here if we're running the averages. Um, so we got two days to be out here. We're going to obviously want shelter. We want to protect ourselves from the elements. So we're going to build a shelter. We want to get a fire going. Okay, so we're going to need to make a fire. Uh, we can survive for two days without food for sure, but you know, water's a little bit more important, so we're going to want to, we're going to want to hydrate. And then if we have the luxury, we're going to want to eat. After we've kind of fixed ourselves, stabilized our minds, communicated, we got a shelter and fire, we're going to probably want to uh, rest. Okay, our, we're tanked out, we're completely just used up and exhausted, we're probably going to just curl up in that shelter and rest because we got time to kill. So we want to be able to, to, to facilitate that. And then after all of that, we're going to want to figure out, are we going to stay or are we going to go? Okay. Do we think people know where we're at? Are we going to stay here, which you know, we've all been taught is probably the best thing to do? Or is there some reason that we're going to have to get out of here? Okay, there's a medical emergency or something. We've run the risk reward uh, and you know, rubric, and we got to get out. Okay, so we're going to be able to address either of those two things, so stay or go. So if we use this evolution of an insult as a guide, that's going to clue us in as to what equipment we're going to need to have with us in that vest, that the most minimal sort of aspect um, to, uh, to answer those questions. So lastly, okay, um, once we, got, we started making our list of what's important and, and, and stuff, and by the way, I don't think it's productive to kind of get caught up in a conversation about which widget is better than what other widget. 44 Magnum is better than a 357, or this knife is better than that knife, <coughs> or this energy bar, or whatever. I think uh, the conversation really should just be about broad brush topics, um, and because this stuff is all subjective, right? But Eventually, if you're building a vest, you do have to choose, okay? So for me, I tried to break these items down into four kind of quadrants, four tenants, right? And um, if I could kind of organize it that way, maybe I'd have a better uh, you know, approach as to what to bring. So four tenants, okay? Um, be healthy. You know, have, these items have to help you be healthy, be comfortable, be crafty, and be found, okay? So what do I mean by that? Be healthy. You wanna be able to have items to fix major medical issues, minor medical issues, mental, dealing with that mental aspect of being alone, and any kind of pharmaceutical stuff, whether it's prescriptions or analgesics or painkillers or so on and so forth. We wanna be able to have items that help us be comfortable, okay? We wanna wear warm and dry, we want to sleep warm and dry, okay? We want things to help us with the elements. Maybe that's rain, sun, for sure, bugs, okay? And we want something for our belly. Definitely hydration, and if we're fortunate or, or, or we, you know, progressive with our planning, maybe something to eat, okay? We want items to help us be crafty, okay? For sure, we want some kind of tool, okay? Some kind of knife, definitely some kind of cordage, something for illumination, something to help harvest or hunt or defend ourselves, something for improvisation, okay? Stuff that we just can't anticipate. Uh, something for water, to carry water, to maybe heat water, okay? Store water if we need to. And then items to help us be found, okay? Those are items for communication, and that's visually, audibly, and electronically in both day and night, all right? And then items to help us evacuate, 
Okay, so I think that's a good starting point for making a list. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull, uh, pull a table over here, lay this vest out, and kind of just open it up and rip through um, everything in there, uh, what's in this vest right now. So uh, let's check it out. All right, here we go. Here we go. So um, probably the best place to start uh, is to uh, describe what the hell this is. This is a uh, military issue flight vest. Um, and the serial number or model number, I don't know what the hell any of this stuff means, but is uh, survival vest type one, mil-DTL-29611. It's actually pretty cool. One size fits all. You got all these adjustable uh, kind of flaps to fit your uh, fat belly or skinny physique, whatever you prefer. Um, it's got four kind of cool internal pouches for skinny stuff. Um, I think probably the best way to tackle this is to uh, go from those four tenants, right? Items to be healthy, items to be comfortable, items to be crafty and items to be found. What I did was I went to Walmart and got one of those vacuum, uh, vacuum food sealer things and, um, for 99 bucks or whatever it was and have been sucking the air out of these uh, little baggies. So hopefully this will just do, I'll do it in one take. So I don't have to cut everything and then repack it. Um, again, I think it's important not to get caught up on the semantics, okay, about which widget is better than what widget. Um, these are just sort of kind of broad brush. I think really it's more important to think about what that item represents rather than what it is. But that being said, I've done a lot of thinking on this and I think that uh, um, some of this stuff is, is pretty good th that I've chose. Um, so items to be healthy and uh, we'll start with medical stuff. Um, wilderness medicine is really uh, near and dear to me. I'm a paramedic. I teach a little bit of wilderness medicine. Um, I'm a fellow wilderness medicine, so um, I kind of really uh, get geeked out on it. This stuff is not a full medical kit, right? It's just the items, bare bones, basic stuff. And maybe I'll do a video on um, medical kits also. But to start with, um, for trauma, okay, this is a cat tourniquet, C-A-T tourniquet, okay? And this pouch here on the side, and I put this pouch under my... Uh, let's see, it's under my right side because when I'm in the airplane, uh, I found sticking out, it kind of interf interferes with the door, but right under my right arm, it seems to be totally fine and doesn't interfere with the flap handle. So again, I put all these items together in these vacuum seal bags, which has been kind of convenient. So I'm going to uh, cut this open. Kind of check out what's in here. All right. So, uh, first thing I got in here are two sets of gloves, okay, for personal protection. There's some medical tape, okay. I got an abdominal pad, right. Um, this is a hem hemorrhage control bandage, okay, it's a military issue. Sticking along with uh, bleeding, I got four two by twos. These are just bandage, two by two bandages. There's four, uh, four by fours. For burns, this is some pretty cool stuff. It's water gel, um, gel soak bandage. Um, petroleum gauze, okay, for a sucking chest wound. This is a povidone iodine swab sterilize. This is also good for, um, you can soak this swab in, uh, in some water and make a, a tea and use that to, to sterilize the water. So it's kind of dual purpose. Dual purpose stuff is good. This is a roll of cling. Okay, it's basically gauze that comes in a roll. We use tons of these on the ambulance. There's two of those, two rolls of cling. I got uh, an airway adjunct for both the nose and then the mouth. This is an OPA and an NPA nasal pharyngeal airway and an oral pharyngeal airway. Two smaller uh, burn gel bandages. There's a little um, five mil syringe. Okay, I can use this for kind of cleaning wounds out, small wounds. 
and then uh, a cravat. Sort of, this is a standard military issue cravat, a sling, for, good for a sling and a swath. So that's my medical, kind of larger medical kit. And then uh, there's sort of a minor medical stuff. I think that's in here, yeah. Okay. So again, this packs up really nice and small with that vacuum bag. Shame, I have to cut all this stuff up, but for the cost. Okay, so in here, uh, this is kind of be healthy and items to also be comfortable, but there's some standard band-aids. There's uh, some alcohol prep pads. Okay. Um, I have two things of mole skin in here. This would be in that be comfortable, you know, for blisters if you have to find yourself having to hike out. Um, I have some meds in here, okay? So uh, this is diphenhydramine or Benadryl, okay, for uh, antihistamine stuff. Uh, and, and anti-diarrheal, okay? Then I have your standard uh, analgesics. I got um, some Tylenol and some Advil. So one is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory and NSAID, the other is Tylenol. Um, they work in different ways and you can sort of uh, go back and forth between these. So again, consult your physician, right? I'm, I'm not advising one way or another, but one thing you could do is if, these, if you take them every four hours, you could uh, preload with a loading dose of Tylenol, then two hours later you hit it with the NSAID and then uh, so you go every two, two, two. That just would be if you had to kind of preload yourself, knock out the pain and, and hike out. And then in this vial, I have a, a um, sort of heavier uh, painkiller in there, as well as a, uh, a uh, broad spectrum antibiotic. In this is Cipro, but Cipro or doxycycline, or consult your physician, <clears throat> but a good broad spectrum if you're going to be out for a while. Remember, this vest is really designed for two days out, but just in case. There's a little... Uh, uh, wound ointment, bacitracin in there. And then in this thing is a, um, I'm not gonna pull this out, but this is a bug net, okay? Just a small one that fits right over your head. Okay, this would be in that be comfortable category. Okay, so be healthy, uh, be comfortable, all right? So, let's look in this. All right, so skipping, this is some cordage. It's 50 feet in there, it's pretty strong. This would be in the be crafty category. Um, you could repel if you needed to out of this. Um, you gotta be careful, but that would hold you. And there's a carabiner in here also to work with that. You could make a Swiss seat and repel if you needed to, but cordage. <coughs> this is kind of cool. Um, what I did is I took a Nalgene. This is a small Nalgene bottle and First thing I put is this titanium uh, REI cup on there. And I kind of went back and forth about, you know, is it overkill to have the cup in there? Well, the one problem that I couldn't solve was how to heat water. And I'll get to why in a second. But this cup kind of fits perfectly over that analogy and it fits in there. So I thought it would be pretty cool to put on there. Again, I'm balancing the risk reward. I don't want to get too big, but um, it didn't take up any more space sliding on. So I put it in. On the outside, I wrapped some fishing line, okay, around the outside, and then there's some duct tape. Okay, so these kind of get into that be crafty kind of zone. So the Nalgene, obviously, you could fill with water and that you could carry your water, but it also, you can fit a ton of stuff in there, okay? So let me see what I got in here. Again, all this stuff is vacuum sealed in here. Uh, this is kind of some sugary foods, all right? Again, we're only gonna be out, what we think, for two, two days, 48 hours, but there's a whole mental aspect in that be healthy aspect, in that be healthy uh, category that survival in the woods is really all about mental stuff. So um, I just think it's nice to have a little bit of kind of pick-me-ups in there. So there's a little teeny thing of chocolate. There's some goo, some energy, all right? There's peppermint. There's a lot of data out there on how peppermint kind of helps you focus and uh, so I put it in there. And then there's a little thing of Starbucks via that coffee in there. Okay, so theoretically you could get that titanium cup, 
get it by the fire, heat it up, and have a little cup of coffee. Okay. The only reason is sort of mental to get you over a dark, kind of a dark time. Also in that mental kind of thinking, I get a little nip of, uh, of gray goose. Okay. Maybe a little bit absurd, but I'm telling you, most of the survival is all about uh, mental. So anything to kind of pick up the spirits, I figure, is, is good. Moving on, there's a little uh, fishing kit in here. It's two hooks and some line, and then there's some, uh, some flies that I put in there. I just, you know, there's a salmon egg and a couple of flies that I sort of randomly threw in there. There's my uh, kind of nutrition. This is a little uh, tonka buffalo meat with cranberry bar. I kind of like snacking on these, so I stuck one of them in there again. We're really worried about hydration, not food, but, you know, if you can fit it in. I figure, what the hell. And then, this is cool. This is um, chicken bullion. Okay. I put three of them in here. Um, one of these bullion cubes in this cup. You could do it cold, but, boy, I tell you, uh, nothing like a little chicken broth, warm chicken broth. We do some, uh, I volunteer at the marathon, Boston Marathon, and uh, at the stations, we give out chicken broth, and it just can really turn you around if you're cold. And so there's three of those in there. Uh, and then one last thing in here. There's uh, actually two things in here. One is an electrolyte solution. Okay, so hydration is key. There's your electrolyte solution. And then um, these are water purification tabs. So I have two ways to purify water. One is with this tab. The other is with the iodine, and they're sort of two different processes to, to uh, treat your water. Okay? Actually, there's four of them in here. And incidentally, I think one of these pills will treat half of this, or, or two of these, something like this is 750 mLs, 400 mLs, and one pill I think will do 750 mLs. So there's quite a lot of treatment capacity in there. I think it's really important that you want to uh, wear warm and dry and sleep warm and dry. So what I mean by that, um, this is sort of right on the fence with whether or not I should carry this or not. Um, but inside here is a smart wool, uh, really fine, but a smart wool top base layer, full, you know, long sleeve base layer, uh, smart wool thin beanie, and a dry pair of socks. Okay. Um, I just feel like if you're cold and wet, boy, that, you know, again, all this stuff is mental. And I think that um, really picking yourself up and getting warm is important. So I felt it uh, a viable thing to put in there. So what else is in here? Um, this is a Sea to Summit um, bivy sack. It's really a, a sleeping bag liner. But this is, uh, will bring your liner down. I think it's bring your sleeping bag down 10 or 15 degrees. So, um, you know, climbing inside of this really is, you know, a good night's sleep. And I, I sleep pretty warm, so um, that will get me halfway there. And then I also have, to go in conjunction with that, uh, this is a, a bivy that's waterproof made by Sol. Okay, so this would take care of the wind and the water, and then that would be my warmth. And with some dry clothes, hopefully I'd get a nice warm sleep. Hopefully. Also in here, uh, and this be comfortable. This is sort of a luxury item. I would put this in or out depending on where I am. But this is just a thing of sunscreen. I think, uh, you know, it would suck to be all burned up. Um, I think you should keep it closed, you know, the way that they package it for one of the things that we forget when we're flying around is the pressure and the altitude, what it does to liquids. And um, last thing you want is this stuff squirting all over the place. So I don't use this. I just keep it in the kit. Okay. Uh, again, kind of be comfortable. I got some bug spray, right? And then here's a Bic lighter. This is one of the ways to light fire. Okay. The bug spray, I think, is, is so key. If you're up in Alaska, boy, those... Skeeters and black flies can get bad. I got a Kai Lumen here, a light stick. Um, I think this is more for a mental thing, too. You know, if it's cold and dark, you crack this, this will go for, I don't know, maybe 12 hours, 10 hours. 
it's just nice. It'll last the night. Um, just kind of keep the edge off in your mind. So inside, um, be comfortable. So uh, the British like to say bog roll, but uh, toilet paper. This is these are baby wipes. I took just a couple of them out there and put them in the vacuum container. Um, I think if you, if all the shit's gone down, you deserve a nice clean ass. Maybe it's just me, um, but I put that in there. <laughs> Another great thing, being comfortable, is a orange construction trash bag. This is pretty thick, and um, you could use this as a poncho. You know, cut the arms out, and um, nice raincoat, right? Um, also, if you need to help build a little shelter or sleep under it, that's always great to have in there. And I think that's all the stuff for be comfortable. So moving on would be uh, be crafty. Okay, so really, man, I think a good survival knife. Okay, this is a uh, made by Gerber. It's um, I think it's designed for helicopter crews. You, you can supposedly bust out a plexiglass. Who knows? But that's on there. Um, you can lash it onto a stick for some kind of killer attack device. Right, but it's really super sharp and um, it's got a striking surface, some good weight. I think that's a really good survival knife. Inside the sheath, there's a, a uh, way to sharpen the knife in there. Um, moving on, there's a utility tool in here. This is a Leatherman Wave. Okay, I think that's, we all know why that's important. Um, in this be crafty idea, uh, I got this little tin in here where I put some zip ties and then also some really fine picture wire. And this is for making snares for squirrels or rabbits. Okay, and this stuff doesn't take up a lot of space, but, um, and I think one of the reasons this problem is so complex is, you know, you can find yourself going, uh, getting sidetracked down the rabbit hole. So if we're using a 42 hour window, it, you know, why the hell would you have a snare in there? Uh, I don't know, maybe the just in case stuff. So that's zip ties and the picture wire for snares in that little peppermint container. Okay, fire. So I said I had the Bic lighter in here, wherever that went. That's one way, obviously the kind of easiest way. Um, for fire, I really do like this fire steel. This is that Bear Grylls uh, flint and steel stuff, which is pretty cool. It works well. Um, and then in the top case, there's room for a, for a little piece of uh, cotton. And then on the lanyard, there's a little high-pitched whistle so you can be heard. And um, in this match case, some people carry storm matches, but I filled this with uh, Vaseline impregnating cotton balls. It's probably I don't know, 12 of them in here or something I stuffed in. And these things will light in the rain and they'll last, I don't know, they'll burn for three or four minutes, maybe a little bit more, which is great for starting fires. So two ways to start fires, the flint and steel uh, with a cotton or the Bic lighter. Be crafty, there's a light, okay. This is a Surefire, super bright light. Um, and I got an extra set of batteries these take those weird CR123 batteries. Okay, so those are in there. I also have, um, I found this at the bike shop. This is a little uh, LED light, and this will last for a super long time. I kind of figured that, you know, if you're going to sleep, you could just put that on a tree or something and just kind of have it going. You don't want to miss your search, um, but be crafty. There's another carabiner in here, so I got two. Uh, in here is a little hand saw, like a little hand chainsaw for cutting down branches, building a shelter and getting some wood to burn. Okay, I think that's pretty handy. This is a deck of cards, and although it may seem simple, uh, this whole idea of squaring your mind away in that situation. Um, some people bring a harmonica, 
Uh, I like a deck of cards, play some solitaire. But this is primarily meant to just keep your mind off the shit storm that just went down. So I think that's a good thing in there for, for be healthy. All right, so uh, be crafty and then be found. So we want to be able to communicate in this. You know, I, I break the be found down into communication and evacuation. So uh, with respect to communication, we want to communicate visually, audibly, and electronically. And um, we want to do that in the day and the night. So in the day, communicating visually, um, I have a little signal mirror in here. Okay, this is just a, sort of a standard signal mirror from REI. Uh, you know, instructions on the back, how to use that. It's pretty cool. And then uh, I have, for night, I have, which is really cool, this is one of those uh, laser flares. Okay, I forget who makes this. Great laser, great land laser. So you turn this thing on, okay, and you put your fingers up as a sight, and then you kind of go like that. And it's supposedly good for, I forget what this, what this one's for, 20 miles or something in the night, or I don't know. But it's pretty cool. Um, incidentally, this takes the same batteries, those CR123 batteries. So there's, it takes one, there's an extra battery in here. This will, you know, I, I, one of the reasons I got the light in this laser is because they use the same batteries. And um, the way I keep this, I had it for this demo, but the way I keep it is I turn it upside down and I put a little piece of tape over the positive end so that the battery won't get used up. You know, sometimes batteries leak in the, in the, in the unit if it's not uh, used for a long time. So that's to be seen. I have a little bear bell in here, be heard for walking around. Um, this is good too, not just for the survival, but when you get out of the plane, when we're up in Alaska, I just always pull this out and kind of jingle jingle. So be heard uh, electronically. And here's a little handheld radio. This is a little Vertex uh, 7R. And then I got the antenna stuff down in here. So this is a tri-band. It's ham radio. It's uh, basically does everything, VHF, UHF. Right, it's a great communication device. Um, also in here, there's a couple of Ziploc bags, right? You could use these to um, store some water in there if you had to. If you also want to need to irrigate a wound, you can clip the corner, use it sort of as a, as a squeegee, get some pressure to irrigate a wound. But there's two of those in there. What else? Okay, so be found. Uh, this is a spot. Okay, a little spot device. Everyone's going to argue over PLB or spot or a, you know Delorme and reach or whatever the next latest and greatest. Uh, again, don't get caught up on what it is. I just think you should have some kind of device, a passive device that people can track where you are, um, and something that you can send out some kind of alert signal. Okay, uh, I've had this spot for a while. I'll probably going to put a PLB in there or something. But again, and then a compass. This is a Lensata compass. Okay, if you don't know how to use these, you should learn how to use it, how to orienteer, read maps. So you should have a map in here. So one thing I'm missing, but obviously I'm going to put the map of where I am in the, in the thing. Okay, so the lens set a compass. And then if you're going to use a compass, you should learn how to use uh, pace beads. Okay, go to, go to a high school track uh, and figure out exactly how many steps, you know, how to use these things. Because this will help you navigate with pace beads. Uh, let's see, anything else in here? Oh, last and least, uh, I got a firearm in here. Okay, this is a 357. Um, I also have a 44 Magnum, that uh, Alaskan. It's a smaller um, barrel, but it packs a little bit more punch for bears. But this is just what I had right here for this. Uh, so there's a firearm in there. And then there would be six rounds in that and then six additional rounds, OK, that I would keep in there. 
So I think that's everything. Uh, there's my survival vest. Take it for what it is. Uh, I hope this kind of gets you thinking about um, sort of how you're going to approach your own situation and what you think is important, what you what you don't. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.